in 2015, I, I cycled across Canada to raise awareness um, for inclusion and acceptance of all people without bias. Uh, my daughter was born with Down syndrome, um, in, uh, our firstborn, daughter, Bryn. And, uh, and so I wanted to raise that awareness. And so, you know, when I got back on the bike, well, the bike was a su successful um, journey across the country, but when I got back, everything went to, went to hell for me. Nick, welcome to Amplified. Um, I want to get people to know more about you and how you perceive, you know, kind of life and business. And that's one of the things that's really been interesting for me watching your content. And so I really just wanted to share that with my listeners is how Nick thinks about the world. So if you just want to give like your 20 second elevator pitch, who you are, what you do, 20, all of the fun stuff. 20 seconds. Wow. Right out of the gate too. I yeah. Love it. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, is Nick Foley, and and uh, and what I do is is I'm an entrepreneur, um, social enterprise usually uh, entrepreneur in the sense that I try to start businesses and things like that to propagate social good in the community. Um, I am a, uh, a professor at Loyalist College. Um, like I said, an entrepreneur. Most importantly, though, I'm a dad and a uh, and a husband. So that's that's me. But I, I really try to live um, to a you know a code of of just trying to do the right thing and and getting up every day and and living you know, to my absolute fullest from the moment my eyes open to the moment they go to, they close to go to bed at night and mm -hmm. just try to live, uh, you know, intentionally and, and, uh, and try to be as, 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 uh, as productive as I can. And what started this? So, I mean, on my, on my very sparse notes, only because I've actually consumed your content for a fair amount of time now, mm -hmm. so I actually know a lot about you already. So my thoughts on this podcast is going to be an entrepreneurial, uh, life and its cadence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the cadence came from um, in 2015, I, I cycled across Canada to raise awareness um, for inclusion and acceptance of all people without bias. Um, my daughter was born with Down syndrome, um, in, uh, our firstborn daughter, Bryn. And, uh, and so I wanted to raise that awareness. And so, you know, when I got back on the bike, well, the bike was a su successful um, journey across the country. But when I got back, everything went to, went to hell for me. And the reason being is because I didn't understand what the come down period was going to be like right so i had zero systems in place i had you know zero intention with the way that i was living my life and after about 11 months of just like you know you know aimlessly you know floating around you know doing nothing not understanding what i was going to do not being great to live with not being around good people like i was just in a bad uh, bad spot not being a good person to be around is what i meant and uh and so i decided that i needed to start to be a little bit more intentional with my existence and so where that came from is like when i'm on the bike when i was on the bike several years ago i had a good cadence of of riding and uh, and i tried to implement that into my into my everyday and so just started with like simple exercise in the morning journaling you know some breathing exercises and liked how i felt and so from there i just you know tried to continue to do that and i worked it into my life and and now i talk a lot about it that and inclusion practices for businesses and it's been uh, it's been it's been a life changing experience for me because literally like you know like I said for a year eleven months I was just like oh I was horrible to be around and now I feel like I'm just you know I'm learning and, and really embracing you know the everyday that comes. How long ago was that? Like how many years ago? Yeah, we're talking uh, about nine years ago. So like it'll be well 10, 20, 20, 2015 I rode I rode um, from May until or so April twenty second until July twenty third. I was on the bike and then from like literally August until um, May of 2016, I was like, I got to figure this out. And it was May 11th, 2016. I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was just kind of scrolling through um, uh, the Internet and I came across a story about a guy um, who has the 2020 rule, which was 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of like just like, you know, cathartic journaling, just getting your thoughts on paper and 20 minutes of the meditation. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. I get up early and usually I didn't have any intention or anything to follow when I got up, just up, watch the sports center, whatever it was. And so I went downstairs, got a book. It was the uh, seven habits of highly successful people, I think. Yep. And um, Stephen Covney. And so I put that out and I put that beside my gym, sh my gym shoes and put them on, went for a run, came back, felt pretty good. So I put on a cup of coffee and, and uh, started to read and, uh, and started to journal and then started to do a little bit of meditation. After an hour, I was like, well, I feel pretty good. And, and then just tried to really lean into that, right? And just try to have a better ex morning, better start. And then eventually with time, it just kind of, you know, kind of manifested itself as it is today where it's like, you know, I teach it to 
corporations and things like that, but also you know, went to school and, and did, a, did a master's in organizational leadership and focused on two things, reflective practices for leaders and also how in uh, inclusion and acceptance of people working in the, in the uh, workforce, how that helps your bottom line. So those are my two focuses. And, and so I've been really, really leaning into that for the last uh, nine years. Nice. It's interesting how many um, successful people want to talk about their mornings. Right. Like if you win the morning, you've won your day. Um, if you're, you know, if like the Tim Ferriss 30, 30, so like within 30 minutes, eat 30 uh, grams of uh, protein. Yeah. All of those things start early on in the day. How much of your success would you contribute to being the person that gets up and does something early? What I would say is 100 percent of my success is contributed to getting up and being intentional. Um, and doing that from the moment that I wake up to the, to, you know, throughout the, throughout the morning. Now I happen just to wake up in the morning and, and cause I go to bed early at night. Now I, what I one thing I won't say is I never subscribe to the notion of like the 5am club or, you know, you're going to, there's no person in the history of humankind. And maybe this is an argument that people might, you know, they might call on your show and be like, he's full of, but here's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't echo that sentiment where it's like, you need to get up in the morning at 5 a.m. And, and, and be successful. And that's the only way you're going to be successful. Well, if you work all night, then you're not, you're doing your, your, your body a disservice by getting up that early. Right. So what I always say to, to people that I work with and, you know, in situations that I've had the stage of speaking, talk about morning routines, platforms like this is I always say, when you get up, be intentional, whether that's at five in the morning or 11 in the morning or two in the afternoon. And so what I would equate my success is, is that once my eyes open and I get up, I go through you know, uh, a, a, a proto protocols one after the other. And that I think has contributed to, you know, what I do in my life to make myself you know, productive. But I would also say like, uh, you know, just to re reiterate it is the caveat is, you know, sleep is your best friend. And it's a superpower. Absolutely. So if you're going to bed at 11 or 12 at night and getting up at five in the morning, it's pretty counterproductive, right? So what I would do is, is, is make sure you're getting your eight or nine hours, whatever it is that you need, and, and then be productive when you get up, whether that's eight in the morning, nine in the morning, six in the morning, five in the morning, it doesn't matter, whenever it is, maybe it's in the afternoon, just be productive with that. And so once you become intentional, it doesn't matter what time you get up, as long as you do that, that's gonna to contribute to your success. It's not cold showers and red light so, therapy. So what I'm hearing, so if we summarize for our listeners, don't lean into a, th uh, into a fad just because somebody says it's good. Lean into the intentionality of what you expect from your day. So if you need to be more productive, then learn to segment your day accordingly so that when you hit the ground running, you are indeed running. If you're going to bed late, you know, get the extra sleep. Extra sleep is far more important than, you know, getting up early and doing like a 20 minute run, eating, you know, and then doing 20 minutes of meditation and reading. For anyone out there who sits there and says, like, if I can do that, I can be successful, you're going about it the wrong way because you need to learn and see why you're starting this. So I really want to dive into your why. And we're going to go past the nine years ago where you kind of got off the bike and then realized you need to be more intentional. And I want to go back to young Nick. And I want to talk about that for a bit, just to give people a bit of an idea, because were you always this driven or were you just someone who just coasted? Or let me hear more about the young Nick. Yeah, I think that um, I was I was always driven. Um, I, I played hockey uh, for the Belleville in, in Belleville, Belleville Bulls and Ontario Hockey League. And so I played four years there and university and things like that. So I always had to make sure that I was, you know, showing up and, and doing, you know, my, my life was hockey back then. Right. Everything was hockey, hockey, hockey. So. I was always pretty a driven guy, but like I also didn't, you know, make any concessions to be successful. And what I mean by that is, you know, I never missed nights out. I was always, you know, I wasn't exactly always taking care of my body, even though I was, you know, working out and running and, and getting ready for the season. Looking back, you know, if I knew now, as they say, right, if I knew now what I, what I didn't know then. then um, but I, I would say that I was always a driven guy. Um, you know, but I, I also feel like I've went through times in my periods of lo uh, uh, times in my life where... I didn't always like who I was, right? So I would be influenced by, you know, people um, I, or, or, or things that I thought I needed to accomplish or do or act a certain way. And, and it wasn't until, you know, it wasn't until recently, in the last few years or not, I really feel like I've really stepped into who I am and getting back to who I was once at like 12, right? It's funny because yeah. it's just like we always want to, we're always so quick to grow up, but like 
for myself, it's just like, you know, I moved away home from home at a young age to play and, and things like that. And I just felt like, you know, looking back on it, um, some of the decisions that I made and, and the things that I that I thought were important weren't oh. and, and realized that, you know, m- inherent, inherently, I try to be a good person and, and I'm not going to allow kindness to be seen as a weakness. But my default is to be kind to people and to try to help as best that I can, but also recognize that, you know, um, that I have value and, and others do too. So for me, getting back to how I was when I was younger, I was a very driven uh, individual, but um, I don't think I was, my intentions weren't going in the right direction always, you know? Yeah, and especially you can run in any direction you want. Exactly. But if you constantly change the direction, yeah. you're never going to get to where you want to go. And that's one thing that we're learning, as, especially as we grow the studios, we grow our businesses, is how does somebody take their life knowledge, which is what you've done, and then intentionally draw it back into a singular point? So you're very focused now on public speaking. You're focused on coaching and consulting and helping people grow. Even with your entrepreneurial adventures, you're still that leader. And that's what you're trying to do is bring more leaders into the fray. Right? And um, I find that a very fascinating thing that you're going in that direction with such a precision base. That's why your morning start off that way. Mm-hmm. The routine, is that born from needing it? Or could you go without the routine and go straight into being successful? Well, I can speak to me. And it was born in a necessity. Yeah. I mean, man, like I was, I was on the verge of losing it. Like, you know, losing my family. You know, I was... I was broke. Um, you know, I talk about this in Life of Cadence every once in a while, but it was just like I didn't have any direction. You know, um, you know, I wasn't a good husband. I, I wasn't probably the best father at the time. I was very selfish, very me-driven. So the routine helped me kind of get my back on foot, back on track, right? Now, yeah. not everybody. I mean, there's some people, and there's lots of research out there to suggest sometimes the, the most successful entrepreneurs and people in the world get up, work, and then go and do their thing. And that's fine. And people do that all the time. Alex Hermosi talks about it. And, you know, Dan Martell talks about it. For myself, what I like to do is, is get up and then and get intentional with my day, get myself centered, get myself right first. Once I get myself right first, then I ask myself the question, what is my 11 o'clock a.m. self going to think of my 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. actions, right? And it's always, if I'm doing things, getting myself, you know, getting a sweat, getting a stretch, you know, drinking water, you know, reflecting a little bit, then I feel like I'm my best self at, you know, 11, 12, 1, whatever, however the day goes, right? So for myself, I think that it's, it, was out of, it was born of necessity, man, because I, I, I was on the verge of losing it all, and, and I never want to go back to that place again. You're putting a structure into your life for a reason, and, and it's funny because as I coach creatives, a lot of them want to go everywhere, and I'm like, how about we get you in this direction really precisely? Because if you can do that really well, you get known for that, right? So I would say the environment or the structure that you place upon your life can help you to get to where you need on a much quicker basis. You can still do this and get to the point B, Mm -hmm. and you can have a lot of fun doing it. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the people who are looking to intentionally get to a certain place and to build upon there, you got to have a trajectory, right? I agree. I, I think you need to have a, you know, uh, a compass, right? Where yeah. you, you're like, this is where I need to get to. And this is, and, and it gives you something to work towards, right? I, you know, they, people always say, it's like, you know, are you, are you living intentionally or are you being reactive or, or are you doing, are you being proactive in your day? Right. And so for myself, as I try to be proactive in my day, whereas I will follow a simple script where, you know, you, you're a journal guy as well. It's just, I literally write everything down or yep. I have a list of things that I need to do and I just cross it off my list. It's the yep. same kind of thing that you're doing right now. I have and a bullet journal, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's literally what I do is I sit there and I'm like, oh, I've got to get this done, get this done, get yeah. this done. If it's not get done, it gets pushed forward. So I was like, can I push forward those two? 100%. And I think in doing that, that, that sets your life to the direction that you want to go. Now, you know, always have to have the end goal, like, you know, the end, the end game where you realize, well, it's, you know, five years down the road, 10 years, Nick, 15, 20 years, Nick, that may not be you. But if you can be like, okay, here are the major things I need to accomplish today. I'm going to get this done, and then everything else will fall into place. Like a lot of times, when it comes to like working for yourself and entrepreneurship, it's not huge, you know, 
things that need to get accomplished in the sense that it's like, you know, it's going to take you all day. Sometimes it's just like a, a few things here and there where you, you do three or four things, you know, you pay a vendor, you, you, you make a connection, you, you, you generate a little bit of, you know, revenue or, or potential revenue in the future. You make that, that kind of relationship. Like those are the things that, that build mm-hmm. businesses, right? Yeah. So it's just a matter of, you know, doing those things and making sure that sometimes you're not getting lost in the, uh, the minutia of the everyday where it's like, I got to get, this, 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 this done. It's like, well, yeah, but are you building towards, are you building your business or are you just, you know, knocking off tasks that you're supposed to do, right? So I think there's a, there's a bit of a difference. For me, it's following my script, on script, off script. And it's yeah. that simple. And I think that's what we can do as entrepreneurs is just make it as simple as possible. Like what works for me may not work for you. But for me, I just know that all the things that are on my script that are important, then they're on one side of the paper. All the things that are other people's requests, they're on the other, yeah. right? And I just knock them off the list as I go. One of the things that I'm trying to do more in this podcast is kind of give people a roadmap and also let them see that they're not alone, right? So I don't know if you've seen any of the podcasts that we've done with Stephanie, for example, we talk about like an emotional roller coaster of running a business. Mm -hmm. And so what's your take on like we're 2024 right now? What's your take on the business environment currently? And how does that affect you as an entrepreneur? So I am familiar with the, the roadmaps that you've been given. I, I've seen Stephanie's lots of times. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm sitting here talking to you. Um, I think they're, they're really great. And so I feel like it, for every individual, it's different. For myself in particular, I feel like um, we are entering a really interesting time in business uh, when it comes to like the gig economy, where you're able to be you know, not only an entrepreneur, but you can also have it as your side hustle. You can also you know, be a full-time mom or a full-time dad and, and, and do work for other people and not be tethered to the, you know, 25 year commitment that, you know, that you might be getting in these huge companies, right? Where maybe our fathers and and, and mothers and and people in our lives, you know, were more accustomed to where it's like, you know, go to school, get out of college or university or leave out out of high school and, or whatever, and get a job early and stay with the company. And then you get a, you know, a nice watch at the end with you sail into retirement. Right. So what did I hear one day where it's just like, you know, a paycheck is is, is is great, but it's it comes at the cost of some of your 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 own ambitions, right? So I love a saying, and this is the one that got me into business: yeah. was if you're not building your dream, you're building someone else's. Hundred percent. I just had a call with a guy today, and he's building this amazing uh, this um, like this amazing platform for dads in particular. And he was talking about you know bringing in revenue in the door. And he does a, he's, a, he's an entrepreneur. He's a solopreneur. Does a great job. He speaks all the time. And he was saying, well, some of his mentors have been telling him that maybe he should work for someone else to get some money in the door. And I said, yeah, you can. You can certainly do that. And that's a viable option. There's honor in that for sure. But you can also just focus your attention on generating, you know, high net worth, like revenue that you do with your speaking. You generate a lot of revenue with that. Focus on that and then focus on getting people in the door for your dad's program. Sure. What, why, why are we building other people's, you know, dreams when you can be doing it yourself? You've been doing it yourself for 10, 15 years. So just continue to, to focus more of your attention on bringing in revenue in the door and then, you know, work on the things that really serve you. And he kind of liked that idea in the sense he's like, yeah, you know what, if I'm working on other things, then it's taking me away from, you know, you know, speaking, it's taking yeah. me away from his coaching and, and, and all those things. Right. So where I see the, the economy going or the business economy going is, is I, I feel there's a lot of value in, in, um, uh, in the gig economy. I feel mm-hmm. there's a lot of value in, and people, you know, doing side hustles and turning them into their their main their main gig once they realize, you know, they can do things, you know. Can you define the gig economy for people who have like not this is a fairly new term that's coming out in the last like year. Yeah. Uh, explain it the best you can for the listeners listening going, well, you know, I have a job, I, I am an entrepreneur, like what's this gig economy? Is that something I'm already doing? Yeah, well in some cases it might be something you're already doing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times how I see it and it could be a different interpretation for others, but the gig economy is like you can have your you can have a job if you want and have a little side hustle where it's the, that like I might be really really good at doing you know design work for people, and so you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket maybe not and so you might have other responsibilities kids house wife husband whatever it is person, and so you just are doing something on the on the side but also it's you're going from you have like six or seven clients so maybe you can do design work for your studio maybe you do design work for one of my companies maybe you can do design work so you have like three or four these little gigs and they have a start time and they have a finish time right mm-hmm. and you just go in there and you do the work for two or three months maybe it's a two or three month contract but you know there's a start there's a finish and you're getting paid on the on the the job that you do yeah, it's like a project based yeah, yeah absolutely and so now a lot of times people will do like they'll have the they'll have their own work 
Mm -hmm. And and then they'll do that. But a lot of times, like I, I was talking to uh, one of my associates today and she has seven different clients that she does social media for. Right. And yeah. that's that's it. They're all just little gigs that she does. And she works from home and she's doing, you know, gigs for that company, gigs for yeah. this one. And it's just does social media. They have contracts for three, four, two months, three weeks. So it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And they're just doing all these little gigs, if you will. Yeah, so. I like that because. The, the one thing that a lot of people get like really lost in the weeds with, especially when they're building a business, is there's there's two kind of business people. There's the business people that will succeed with support, and then the ones that will succeed without support, right? And so the ones that are succeed without support are the kind of the people like burn all their boats, sail out there, and just go for it, right? It's like I'm in that category. I just, I'll go all in to make it work, right? And it's only when I've got my back against the wall will I actually get what needs to be done. But there are some people out there who can go out there and work away and have like extra kind of like gigs and income streams to help them build to where they're going. And I always envy those people because I'm like, man, how do you get the motivation? Like, especially when you have something to go, how do I continue to be motivated towards something, even though I can quite happily be here, right? Because like humans are naturally seeking comfort, right? So how do you break out of comfort with comfort to make something successful? That's always been a fascination of mine. Well, I think it's a it's a good question because I, I feel like it depends on what you want, right? Yeah. Like how fast do you want to scale, right? If you if you're if you're just okay with working on it and doing a little here and then you, you work a full time job, then then chances are you're not gonna you're not gonna scale. But if you burn the boats, as they say, right, yeah. and be, that's how you take the island because you have no other option, then mm -hmm. you're gonna do things a lot quicker. However, I think there's value in both. Like yeah. I feel like if you you know the, the burn the boats option where it's like, well, I have nothing, I have no parachute here is going to allow you, yes, to work harder, but it's also going to put a lot more stress on mm -hmm. you to make sure that you're making ends meet, as they call it. If you're doing something that's new, what I would encourage people to do is it's like, well, don't leave your job right now, right away. Look and see, like dabble in a little bit. Because once you start taking away the, um, the stress of having to make it all work, to pay your staff, to make all your bills you know, on time, once you take that away and you have a foundation based on a job that you're doing, then grow, then, then all of a sudden you have a lot more creative licensing in your own business to do your, to do your thing. And you're not worried about everything else. Oh, okay, that's gonna take care of because I have this, I have this parachute, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think there's value in both. I've been in both two situations where it's like, you know, breaking bricks all day and, and then working in, in my parents' basement all night trying to get, you know, schools to, to buy into whatever it is that I was doing. Like, I've seen all that. I've also, you know, started businesses while I'm working full time in my job. So I think that there's there's benefits to both. Um, but I would I would encourage people, especially in today's economy, you got a good job that you enjoy doing. If you hate it, then, you know, I would encourage you to do a job that you may not absolutely love. Maybe it's, you know, Maybe you're driving um, for Uber or something that you're just kind of doing to kind of pay the bills and bring mm -hmm. in some money while you're working on your business. I, that's what I think in, in business now. There's no like rules in the sense that we have to do it one way, mm -hmm. right? Like the, the, that's what's so great about the world and, and that we live in is that people are so creative in the way that they think. And people are so creative in the way that they do business that, you know, you can drive for one of these, you know, one of these companies or, or Airbnb a room out in your, in your basement, whatever it is, to generate some revenue while you're working on something. Or you can have a business and, and generate a side hustle or, or you can do like what you did and just be like, I'm all in and generate revenue that way. So there's so many different ways to be a business. I think the only thing that's stopping people from being an entrepreneur is their own mindset. Yeah. They, they, they have that can't do attitude. And if, as soon as you turn that mindset into, you know, I can get this going, then, you, you know, you're, you're going to be successful. I 100% agree because it's like when you start building your business and you build the awareness of where you want to go, you start looking at all of the ecosystems around it differently, right? So when we built this studio, for example, we looked at the podcast studio going, we really want to do this because we want to share with these stories, we want to educate. Those were some of our core values, right? But then when we got into it, like, well, how do we make this work, right? And so you start building out different ideas for things and trying them out and kind of toying with it, right? So, exactly. and that's exactly it. And like, as my agency grows, like one of the things that we do is we learn from a lot of businesses. And so we talk to a lot of businesses because if I turn around to you and said, oh, you know, what are some of the problems that you're dealing with? Now I can help you because I've got like 17, 18 people I've talked to this week who have had similar business problems, but have solved them in different manners. Absolutely. And I, I feel like, you know, the only restraints that we have are the ones we put on ourselves, right? Like, so I, like if you're having, I'm a big believer in, in I was talking to an associate the other day and, and I said to him, I said, you want your business to work? He said, yeah. And I said, have a conversation every day about it. Yeah. He goes, what do you mean? I said, just 
talk to co- colleagues, talk to myself, talk to associates. But if you want to be, if you want your business to work, you know, have conversations. If you, you mean to tell me that if you don't call, if you call five people every single day for 365 days a year, minus, you know, a few, few here and there for holidays and weekends and things like that. But if you have, if you call five people a day, you mean you're not going to generate any revenue. It's almost impossible. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if you want to build your business, you don't have to have this grandiose, like, okay, well, we're going to have this amazing ad, you know, this ad campaign we have to do. And maybe in some cases that's good, but if you are just starting with just you and your thoughts and your computer, send a message, send five DMS a day in, in Instagram or LinkedIn or something, just saying like, this is what I do. Thanks for following along. Would you be interested in, following just the stories or would you like to learn what I, how I can help serve your yeah. community? Let me switch that on you a little bit just because there's a slight shift in how socials is done now and it works out beautifully. Always think about it with, uh, we call it the WIFM, so what's in it for me mm-hmm. from your viewer's perspective. So when you're going out there and we test, we test this all the time and it works really well. So if you're going out there to place a comment, you can do a hundred, a thousand comments a day and not get anything because if you're just going on, great, mm-hmm. good job, whatever, doesn't mean anything. Right. The trick, scroll through those comments and look for the question that hasn't been answered or a question that has been answered poorly and then answer it to the best of your ability, but only come at it from a complete you know, serving them. Absolutely. Right. So rather than trying to perform, just serve. Go out there and say, this is what I find works. Give it a shot. And then you'll find that suddenly you've got a new follower. You got a new like, or they'll go back through your content and be like, man, this is so true. And you are you, right? And if you get over that as quick as possible and then stop just producing content based on who you are, you'll find you'll get much more success. And like long tail success is what we deal with here, right? We're not interested in short-term success. Short-term success is I need to get my business rolling now. You run an ad or you go out there and you start shaking hands. You get really aggressive in your marketing that allows you to bring in the business to be able to convert that into sales. Long tail is a lot harder game to play and a lot of people don't like to do it, but it's the one that serves you in the long run, which is what you build on your daily now, you're gonna do for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Absolutely. Which terrifies people, because they're like, I don't wanna do that. Well, find something you really like doing. I really like talking to people about how they've become successful and how they've grown what they're doing or where the success lies. That for me is exciting, and I can do that every month. I can do day in day out. Yeah, no, so I, find something like that. Absolutely, I, I 100% agree. And and I, I feel like it was interesting because I, I say to people all the time, like, give your content out for free. They're like, what? I'm like, well, just give it out for free. 100%. I'm like, I, I I always give my content out for free. I only charge for the execution, right? So give the content out for free because you'd be like, here, this is what I do. This is how I do it, and then it's yours. But if you want my you know my expertise on something, and if you want my time, you know, weekly or or, or or monthly, whatever it is, then then yeah, there's a there's a charge for the execution. But I give all my stuff out away. If you go through all my socials, there is nothing that I don't work with uh, when it comes to corporations or coaching or anything like that that I haven't already said on social media. Yeah, right. Just it's out there. I give that away, and that's what I would encourage a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Is just like you're we're so worried about like oh I don't want it. You know what about my, you know the, the the licensing on it? It's mine. It's mine. I'm just like no, give it away, give it away, and see what happens. Because if you are of service then you are of value. Yeah, It's that simple. If you are of service, you are of value. To summarize that, give freely and become an absolute genuine person online. Like just go out there with 100% looking to serve others and the, we'll call it um, emotional karma or or karmic debt that you put into the world eventually will come back. And it's like, and it's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be a month from now, right? So here's some, Weirdly interesting stats about this podcast studio that we've just found. We've done like a testing for the last six months and a lot of us have gone and done like daily videos and it has not been intentional by any means. We've not gone out there and said, oh, today we're going to talk about this. It's kind of off the cuff, learning and growing and doing all that fun stuff. On average, when people come in here and do this, they see a natural increase of 600%. On the across the board great numbers which is insane yeah so and we haven't really done anything to earn that we've just gone out there and just given freely we just tried to give like i just look at it and go if i was the young person watching this can i get one piece of information from this that i can then take and then action on and yes. that's all i care about like as someone who grew up in this area where there wasn't a lot of sharing of information like on how to do the the photography or how to charge for it or who to meet all of those things i had to learn by myself 
And so it's understanding that that's what my core is in this is like, how do we bring people to the table and give them value? And that's what we're doing. We don't actually care about the result. We don't care how many people view it, like it, share it. None of that matters because all I want is one person to sit there and watch it and go, man, I woke up and I did the 20, 20, 20. That's it. Well, I'm a hundred percent sitting here talking to you because of the model that you just described. Yeah. Like, and that's it. Like I saw Stephanie on here and I saw Paul on here and I've seen other people on here and, and I stop and scroll because a couple of things, one, it's produced well, but two, the content was interesting. Yeah. Right. And so what do I do? I looked at, I looked at your at amp and I, ah, I know him, yeah. sent a message, you know? So I, I believe that. I think that if you, if you give freely, right, if you give with the intent to serve, then, you know, just through the law of reciprocity, it's all going to come back. It yeah. may not be tomorrow, may not be the next day, but just continue to show up. And that's not being, well, it's going to come back. Don't let that be your driving force. Let no. the driving force literally be as simple as, I just want to be of value. Yeah. I don't, and it's so much easier to hate or to uh, deal with haters when you're just like, you know, be like, oh, I hate your content. That's okay. I just want to be of value. If I can be of service in any way, send me a DM. You know, and they hate that, <laughs> right? But I just like, I'm just going to love on you, man. And that's it. That's the how it rolls. The first podcast we put out, it was so funny. So we, Brady and I sat in the back there and it's like, if you go back you can find it in the youtube i don't think it's on um, amplified and we get out there and we put together this content and we pushed it out there and we're talking about how we wanted to build this studio to help people grow and the first comment was not everybody needs a podcast and i'm just like you're right not everybody needs a podcast but you know please don't go into podcasting because the less crowded it is, the easier it is for the people doing it. Exactly. And, and that's the number one thing I always look at now when people critique. The first thing I do is look at what they've done, mm. right? Like if someone like high up in the food chain tells me like, stop doing that, do this. Well, then they probably have a reason because they've made it that far. But more often than not, you never get criticized from the people who are above you. You get criticized from the people who are below you. And often that is the people that would never do what you're doing to get to where you want to go. They want to do it in a completely weird manner. And that's fine, too. It just doesn't work that way. Well, and I, I think, yeah, even further to that, I think there's, you know, there's two, two things that people need when it comes to feedback. Number one, the person receiving the feedback has to feel safe in your presence. And so often, right, everybody's like, well, let me give you some feedback. Let me give you some feedback. And like, you have no relationship with that person when you're doing that. So number one is they have to, the person receiving the feedback has to feel safe with you. And number two speaks to exactly what you're talking about. That person that's receiving the feedback needs to view you as someone worthy to give the feedback. Yeah. Right. And so if you're listening and it's always, it's always people that are not doing the thing that are the, the most that are critical, you know, the keyboard cowboy, keyboard cowboys, as they call it, right? It's always the person that's, that's not doing it, that's, that has the most to say. Yeah. And I've, I just know through my life that, you know, the mentors that I've had in my life, the coaches that I've had in my life, and yes, I invest in coaching, absolutely. And the people that I have in my life that are giving me insights are, are ones that have been there and the ones that I feel safe with. And so I'm looking at them being like, I feel safe in their presence and I value what they've done in their life. So yeah. I'm gonna to listen to that feedback. If you have those two things, then, you know, and they just wanna serve, they just wanna yeah. help. Take it or leave it. Here's what I think that you should do, or here's what I would consider, you know? And I always say that to my friends. I'm like, do you want me to give you feedback? Are you asking for feedback? Or are you asking for me to be your friend? Because there's a difference. Like yes. if you want me to give you insights on your business that I, like on business that I know, then that's a lot different from me waving the pom poms, being like, "Hey, man, you're doing great. Keep it going." Yeah. But you know, if they, they're like, "No, no, I want your feedback," then that's a little different mm -hmm. vibe that I. Well, that you're I also get. inviting it too. If you're asking for feedback, you think that you can improve. Yeah. And and we run into this all the time, especially in the video production world. Is we'll ask for feedback from the client. We've changed that recently. We've been we've been pushing out the content and saying, "This is what we've done." but not asking for feedback. And we find that notes are coming back less yeah. because when you ask someone for feedback, they naturally feel inclined to be like, oh, he wants something from me, so I should give him something, right? And so then they're like, oh, you know, this could be a little bit faster or make it pop, right? Like that's a, a number one thing, like you'll hear clients say like, oh, just make it pop. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what does that mean? There's no, there's no pop button in Premiere. <laughs> so how do you make that work? You know, so that's kind of how I perceive it as like when you start asking for the, you know, mean it, right? And so if I came to you and said, hey, Nick, like, I want to get into uh, public speaking, right? And I'm slowly getting pulled that way, <laughs> which is funny because two years ago, I was terrified of even like sitting down doing this stuff here. So for me, like going and growing as a, as a public speaker, I'm starting to notice things that I haven't before. So like intonations, how people work. So if someone's watching this right now, 
and we're talking like ground zero, right? And they're just like, I feel like I've got something to give inside me and I don't know how to do it. And I've heard public speaking is the way to go. What would be your number one starting tip for people who are starting that route? Ooh. Yeah. We're getting to that part of the show. Yeah. Uh, I would say show up as your authentic self. That's what I would say. And, and be exactly who you are and allow that to come out in exactly how you live. So if I'm one way on stage and I'm somebody completely different, then the audience is always going off stage. The audience is always going to know. So anybody that ever asked for my advice on public speaking, there's two things I would say. One, show up authentically as yourself and be unapologetic by it. This is you. You show up as you. And number two, do the reps. That's it. You don't become a public speaker by speaking in front of the mirror. You become a public speaker, you become a keynote speaker, a workshop presenter, whatever it is, pick your, pick your, your term. You become that by doing. And I think it's a metaphor for life, right? You become a good entrepreneur by being an entrepreneur, by starting off as a bad one. And I always look at things in life as through the lens of a learner, right? So I've been speaking for 12 years now, uh, since I think I started in 20, uh, 2012, 2011, 2012, in around there. And I am only looking at it through the guise of how can I be better? How can I serve more, right? But keeping in mind that I need to continue to do reps and I need to continue to authentically show up as myself. And I always say to people, like, you know, show up as yourself authentically, but unapologetically, right? A lot of people are here, like in social media or in speaking, they don't get asked to speak very often is because they're not really saying anything. They're, they're talking. Sure. They're filling the hour, but like have a stance on something. Yeah. And let that come out in how you live. And so if you have certain systems that you put in your life, then live them every day. So that when you're posting about social media and they ask you to come in and talk about different things, then they're going to be like, well, who do I call when I need this? Yeah. Right. Oh, that's Ash. That's who we call. They, who do I call when I need that? Well, that's Nick. That's who you call. So allow your onstage persona to live every day in your life but show up authentically as yourself and continue to do the reps. That's the secret sauce is like just continue to do it. Right. It's a little bit controversial, but I believe authenticity is a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a catch all. I want to add on something to that. And what we're talking about and what you're talking about is called personal branding, right? So your personal brand is you as kind of productized version of you, right? That's what a, per a personal brand is, right? And I will ab absolutely in this day and age advocate for personal brands over a business brand. Like if you're going to start a business today, start a personal brand and start a business brand, but really focus in on that personal brand because your opinions, your authenticity, as you talk about, are key. Now, here's the, here's the catch. Authenticity needs to be authentic to the personal brand. So if you're naturally like super energetic and excited and, and that's you, if you show up and you're having like a really rough day and you show up low energy, it's going to affect you and it's going to affect your personal brand on a way that you can't see. So yeah. you have to show up consistently and just do those reps, like you say, but be consistent. So when we say authenticity, we're actually asking for a consistency within you. So if you don't know the consistent version of you, go back and find it. But I think that changes too, right? Like sure. the authentic, the authentic, consistent version of myself as a father is different from the authentic, consistent version of myself as an entrepreneur as a friend, as a husband, right? So I think that Dan, uh, what's the name? Todd Herman wrote a great book called The Alter Ego Effect. And yeah. he, in it, he talks about, you know, showing up as different people. And so I know that the word authenticity and being authentic is, it, there's a lot of nuance it's to it. Buzzword yeah, right it now. is a buzzword right now, for sure. Yeah. But if you use it in the, under the terms of like, no, no, I'm gonna show up as my authentic self as a father, and I'm gonna be consistent with that. So every single day when I walk through the thresholds and I'm like, hey, I'm home, I am dad mode. The hoodie goes on, the, the, you know, the comfortable pants. I'm on the floor with the kids playing. I'm actually on the floor now. They're a little older. But, like, you know what I mean? I'm doing homework. I'm, <coughs> I'm doing homework. I'm helping where I can in different areas. When I'm out and I'm in business and I'm walking through the thresholds of the, the office or I'm on stage, then I'm authentically that person, right? Yeah. And so I think that there's, there's some nuance to that. Yeah, and so that's the authenticity we talk about, right? So it's like making sure that it's consistent in that respect. 100%. Yeah. When you talked about, hmm, I kind of want to loop it back into some long-term and consistency, just to wrap up. And one of the things that I really appreciate about you is 
as you're growing, you're, you're very much aware of the long tail. So do you write these down? Do you build out these goals? Like what's your, because if you don't have a goal post, you're never going to hit your goal, right. right? So do you write down these goals? Are you making them visible to you? How do you, how do you, how do you work with that end goal? Yeah. So every day I write my goals down. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's overly complicated, but like I said about anything in business or in life, if you're con- talking about it, if you're communicating about it, it's going to help, right? So if you're in a relationship with someone, a lot of times people will say, well, it didn't work out. And where did it, where did, if you dig it all out, if you dig it all, you know, you go back and you, you look at it, why didn't it work? Well, you stop communicating, right? So the same goes for your goals, man. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. I write out my goals every single day to keep them front of mind, right? I review them every night before I go to bed. And so I just try to keep them simple. And I, I look at what my goal is. Okay, so if I have a goal of, say, I want to get into optimal health, usually it's something that's a little bit more um, specific, but I can look at that metric <clears throat> every quarter, every day, every month. What am I doing? So am I, is my aspirations in life aligned with my everyday application? So are my goals aligned with my, my aspirations, my goals, are they aligned with my application every day? So if I say I want to start a business and I have done nothing any day for the first quarter, as we're rounding the first quarter as this is being filmed, then I'm not on my way to start a business, no. right? So if I say I want to start a business, but I, and I dedicate my life every single day to doing one thing to get that business up and running, then I'm on my way, right? And so then I look at it every quarter, at the end of the quarter, what did I do? And I just write down where it's at every goal. So if it's getting optimal health, it's just like I started a new uh, vitamin regime. I, sw- uh, I worked out, you know, 89% of the days of the, of the month on average, and I'm, you know, cutting out sugars the best that I can, no alcohol. So I can look at that and I'll be like, okay, that's what I did for quarter one. So for quarter two, where am I going to be after quarter two, three, four? And at the end of it, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you just break them into to bite size, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So yeah, for me to answer that question, absolutely. I, I write them down every day. I think it's important to keep them at front of mind. You know, you have to communicate with yourself what your goals are, where your goal posts are. Because like you said, like if you don't know where the goal posts are, then you're just going to be, you know, taking shots in the wind and it's not going to yeah. go anywhere. I find for me, I just put three main goals up. And I just post them somewhere where they're visible. Yep. And then I always kind of refer back to the, am I working on something that's moving me towards that? Or am I just finding work to do? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and that's the thing. You just ask that questioning. Like, yeah. what, what's going to make today productive? What needs my attention? What's going well? Those are yeah. the three questions I ask myself every day. Now, if our listeners want to follow you, want to get to know more about this, about the life of Cadence, uh, where can they find you? Where do you live most online? Yeah, most online, uh, Instagram, uh, Nick on uh, Nick Foley, Nick underscore Foley one on Instagram, uh, Nick Foley dot is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Just send me a message. If you uh, liked anything you heard, send me a message. If you don't like anything you heard, send you a message. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> send me a message. I'm here for it. Um, but Nick Foley dot CA is the best way to get a hold of me. And, and uh, Nick underscore Foley one, usually on Instagram, um, LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, Nick Foley um, on LinkedIn. Send me a message. I'm happy to communicate. And if I can be a value, that's it. That's what I want to be a value and of service every day that I wake up in the morning. If I can be a value for that for that person, then I'm happy to uh, give them anything that they need to help. Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us, and I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck. That was fun. Thanks a lot. Cheers.